three, two, one, we're live. Good evening or welcome. Good day. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I have been asked to talk about my arrest by the police and brought before the grand jury in New York, end up in the Supreme Court of New York. It was all all right. But my arrest didn't begin in 1987. It, the stage was set long before the 10th of February of 1987. You see, before I got to New York, many, many, many years before, there were many healers then, like they are now, making claims, but never have, you know, delivered. There were 2,000 781 cases that went before the Supreme Court for practicing medicine without a license and making fraudulent claims. I'm the 2,782nd. When the police came, I said to them, I asked them, why do you have your gun drawn? You are in a health place, the Usha Research Institute. Why do you have your gun drawn? They said the element of surprise. I said, but my mother told me that when I put the ad in the papers, that we cure AIDS and other diseases, that you would be coming. My mother told me that. Been two years now, we've been waiting for you. You said, element of surprise? You're kind of two years late. About the arrest, It was the most beautiful thing that I ever experienced in my life unfolding in front of me. If I were aware of what was happening to me, I think I would have backed out. I would have got scared. Okay. So they put the cuffs on me and said, you have, you have advertised that you cure AIDS and other diseases, which is practicing medicine without a license, and you're also selling product not approved by the FDA. Oh boy, I got all these charges against me. When they put the cuffs on me and they take me down the steps, guess what is about to happen? A dialogue between me and the herbs. And the herb, I have to go down 19 steps. The herbs are saying, yeah, Dr. Savi, for two years, they've been, for five years then, they've been saying, Dr. Savi, Dr. Savi, Dr. Savi, giving you all kind of praise, standing ovation. But I hope that you know it. We, the herb, were the one that was giving you that privilege. Now, when he gave you the standing ovations, oh, you were happy. Everybody just, Dr. Savi. Now we, we, the herb, got cuffs on your arms. Handcuffs. Are you going to feel the same way? And I start to laugh. I said, oh, my God. I'm a victim because 
The standing ovations was because of the herbs. Now the handcuffs is because of the herbs. So I know that when the herbs came into my brain and we had this dialogue that the herb wasn't going to betray me because I know they represent truth. When they opened the door to let me in front in the street, Channel 7 said, Dr. Sebi, do you really cure AIDS? I said, I cure AIDS then, I cure AIDS now, and for as long as I live, I cure AIDS. Well, how do you feel to be arrested? I say, I feel good. The police have to do things the police way. So I wasn't angry at the Attorney General, Mr. Robert Abrams, for arresting me because my brothers and sisters were in New York occupying a position that was unfounded and they thought that I was part of that. No. I'm a different kind of animal. Not better, not worse. A different animal. Don't even try to calibrate me because you do not have a barometer that could measure what I am and who I am. That also would be a mechanical measurement. So don't even go there. I too cannot calibrate you. So when I gave that response to Channel 7, the police then said, why do you have to tell them that? I said, but you guys acting crazy with me. You know, gun drawn cuffs on me. And I, or because I said that I cure AIDS. If I said that I cure AIDS and sickle cell and lupus and herpes, then A, you should welcome this. No, put it right there. See, you should welcome this. I am your brother. I am a citizen of the United States. I live in the United States. Do you believe that I would leave Honduras to go to America to deploy a bunch of things that were less than the truth? Come on now. No. That was never part of my DNA. That was never part of my giving. That was never anything that I deploy. I don't do that. I never have done that. So they put me in the car and took me to the precinct. When I got to the precinct, the officer that is going to fingerprint me and put the number on my chest said to the officers, you guys messed up. So why you say that? Because this man really healed. They said, I asked him, how do you know? He said, because you healed me. I had gout. I said, but I've never seen you. He said, no, I sent a black policeman to tell you that he had gout and he brought me the medicine or the compounds. I said, why didn't you come? He said, because, you know, I don't know if you love white people, the way you talk, that's me, you know. I'm so certain that everybody thinks that I'm angry. <laughs> I said, you don't know if I love white people. I said, uh, I don't know of any black person that hate white people nowhere in the world. It is impossible for a black person to hate a white person. That is impossible. 
Why? Because our DNA does not represent that. We die for you. We fight wars for you. I was in the merchant marine for 10 years for you. What? That was the dictate. He said, thank you, man. Thank you. I said, thank you. You see, the perception or the myth is that to be black, you got to hate white. You got to hate Chinese. You got to hate Arabs. You got to hate Eskimos. Not to mention Indians or natives. No. To be black is to be sweet. To be black is to be a servant. To be black is to serve. And there's no better position. So, I'm thrown in jail, and here come the day of the trial. The first one was the civil case. Judge Shorter, William Shorter, from Washington, D.C., but he was in the Sixth Appellate Court in New York. He was the judge that let me out on my own recognizance. I arrived in his chambers. He said, why did you advertise that you curate? I said, well, you see, Your Honor, I have a mother that's alive, and there is a continent, a continent by the name of Africa, to which I am a son of. I am an African, and I am not going to make a statement that would undermine my mama, Africa, and my face. And the judge looked at me, and he looked at the woman at the table. He realized that the answer I gave him was one that said, if I didn't cure AIDS, that statement wouldn't be made. He looked at the lady at the table and said, did you guys investigate this man before you arrest him? She said, no. You know, a savior, you know, arrest the nigger. Oh. So the judge said, you didn't investigate the man before you arrested him? She said, no. The judge said, well, the answer he just gave me, he courage. You guys are going to be in trouble. And yes, indeed, the case began now in the civil court. Down below is the Dr. Victor Herbert, an assistant uh, uh, prosecuting attorney or assistant district attorney, Philip Spade, is asking the position in favor of the state. Have you heard? Of any individual that cured AIDS, Dr. Victor Herbert? He said, no. Have you heard of any therapy that cured AIDS? He said, no. Have you heard of any compounds that cure AIDS? He said, no. The judge is cleaning his nails with his eyes closed. And the judge opened his eyes and said, have you ever used Exhibit A? The doctor said, no. The judge said, thank you. I went back to cleaning his nails. When the doctor saw that the judge just destroyed his line of defense, the doctor said, 
Yeah, Ron, I know all about herbs. Like take, for instance, the foxglove. And the judge responded by saying, the white or the pink? I said, now how in the devil does this judge know about herbs? Well, the case went on and finally, I won in the, in the civil case. But the judge, Judge Shorter said to me, Dr. Sebi, when you walk in my courthouse, the state wanted me in my chambers. The state wanted me to see you as a villain. <laughs>